Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gersa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am so excited to share with you the adorable Hello Ladybug bundle from the Stampin' Up! January to June mini catalog. Now this bundle is one of the more cost-effective ones in the mini catalog, but has so many possibilities. You certainly get great value on this bundle. So today we are going to make three cute projects. Um, one is a fun fold, one is a slim line, and one is a cute, cute punch art card. So I've got lots of things to share with you. Um, and I hope that you are have a, uh, a yummy beverage and you're ready to sit down and join me for, for the next 40 minutes or so. Now I have dinner in the oven, so <laughs> we have to finish on time because uh, my dinner will not be, well, it'll overcook and that would not be good. So we're going to finish at, I'm hoping, uh, 5.45 so that we can, uh, I can still have dinner and have it taste good. All right, so let me pull up my video here on my iPad and see who is watching today. All right, we've got Janet and Claire and Deb. Hello, ladies. Hope you all are well. Hi, Krista. How are you doing? All right, so we are all about, as I said, the Hello Ladybug bundle from the mini catalog today. So um, I'm going to flip the camera. I'm going to show you the bundle, and we are going to get busy. Okay. Hi, Danielle. How are you? Hello, Mary Lou. All right, here we go. Time to flip. i got to get these notifications out of the way. All right, we're going to flip a roo. There we go. Hi, Chris. Just saw your name come across the screen. Hi, Cheryl. All right. That looks pretty good. We'll get my lamps out of the way, make sure we're centered here. Okay. That looks pretty good. All right, so here is the bundle in the catalog. It's not part of a suite, it is just a bundle. Uh, photopolymer stamps and adorable punch. Um, it's priced at $44 here in Canada, which is a really great price for a stamp and punch bundle. And like I said, so many possibilities with this one. So let me get the catalog out of the way. Here is the bundle up close and personal. So we've got this adorable stamp set. Um, cute little ladybugs. The, this one will punch out with the punch. So the this ladybug and the leaves will punch with the punch. Um, this one actually fits the medium daisy punch, which is a, a separate punch. And then we have other images and sentiments. So really, really fun. And of course, there is our punch. Lots and lots of things we can do with these shapes. So you're going to see that in action in a little bit. All right. So... First card we're going to make is this one. I posted this one yesterday. It's a fun fold. I featured this fun fold in the past um, in my videos, and I just love it so much because it's a great way to showcase DSP. And today I am saying goodbye to two of my favorite <laughs> retiring in colors, Magenta Madness and Just Jade. So I'm going to show you how to put this one together. Um, I'm going to go through the measurements fairly quickly. They will all get posted later on this evening in the video description. So if you kind of miss um, my measurements as I'm going through, not to worry, they will all be um, posted for you so that if you wanna try making this fun fold, um, you have all the measurements there, you don't have to guess. All right, so to start, we're gonna construct um, sort of our base here. So I have a piece, this is the In Color 6x6 um, DSP. This is retiring, uh, it's in Just Jade, and it is, I've gotta get the measurements, three and seven eighths by five and one eighth, okay? Then I have a piece of Magenta Madness. Oh, I'm going to miss this color. I love this hot, hot magenta color. Um, this one is cut to four by five and a quarter. Okay, so we're going to start by layering the DSP onto our cardstock. So we'll just get a little bit of adhesive going here. And pop this on. Hi, Linda. How are you? Hi, Laura. I am impressed that you ladies in Southern Ontario are joining me today when it's such a gorgeous day outside. I hope you're sitting outside watching on your phone <laughs> because it's so beautiful. All right, so that is our base. Then we're going to make our sort of swing arm piece here. And for that, I have a piece of Just Jade cardstock. It's cut to five and three quarters by one and three quarters inches, and it's scored at a half inch, okay? So I am going to fold this along my score line. I want to burnish that really well because I'm going to want that to lie nice and flat. 
okay? Then I have another piece of In Color DSP. This is the same pattern that I used for the Just J, but I'm gonna use the reverse side. Um, this this kind of reminded me a little bit of, of flowers or even like little insects in behind, so I thought it worked well with this, um, this bundle. So this one is cut to five and one eighth by two. Oh, did I cut that wrong? I gave the wrong measurements, that's what the problem is. A five and three quarters by two and one eighth. This one is cut to five and a quarter by two, okay? I will make sure I get those measurements right in the instructions when I, when I post them, okay? So we're gonna glue that one onto there. So let's get a little bit of glue going there. Oh, I know, retiring in colors always make me sad too. I love these colors, but I gotta tell you, Debbie, the new ones, oh my goodness, I'm loving them. I have had some time to play with them um, this past weekend, and oh my stars, I just, I love them. They're nice and bright, which is kind of what remind, these colors remind me of. Okay, so we have our panel. Now what we're going to do is kind of that little flap that we had folded, we're gonna kind of hook that um, on our larger piece, okay? And what I wanna do is get this center. Now I could be really uptight and measure this, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna eyeball it and get it approximately centered. Okay, right about there is good, sure. All right, so then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put some strong adhesive. I'm gonna use a bit of seal here. I'm gonna run it along that flap. You want this to be pretty strong and we're gonna fold that over. And again, I'm gonna burnish that really well because I wanna make sure I get a good seal. Okay, and that gives me my little flap there. Okay, now at this point, we are ready to glue this piece onto our base. So this is just a standard card front size. So a four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, so this fits into a standard envelope. Looks like my cat had a little munch there. She had a little temper tantrum the other day and had a go at some of my cardstock. <laughs> and it looks like I've got teeth marks in the bottom of my cardstock. What can I say? She's a naughty one. So we're gonna add a little bit of seal to the back of this. And then we are going to center this just like that. We're gonna have about an eighth of an inch border all the way around. Yeah, I love this fun fold too, Krista. There's so much we can do with it. Um, it's a great one. Hi, Pam, thanks so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. All right, now, before we do anything for the front, we're going to work on this inside panel, okay? And you'll see why in a minute. So I have two pieces of basic white cut here. Look at more teeth marks. Oh, Phoebe, you're so bad. All right, so I have two pieces of basic white. Um, this one is cut to three by three inches and it is going to be for my inside panel, okay? Now, before we glue that on, we're gonna do a little stamping. So I have this adorable, you can bug me anytime sentiment, which is from the Hello Ladybug stamp set. So I'm gonna ink that up in a little bit of memento basic or memento tuxedo, tuxedo black ink and stamp my sentiment, okay? And then I have this stamp, it's three flowers from the same stamp set. And I'm gonna ink it up, you can see it's stained pink from the magenta madness. Um, I am totally fine with stained stamps, it means they've been well loved, they still work. Staining does not affect um, the functioning of your stamps, it just, they, they look, they look well loved, let's put it that way. So I stamped a few of the little flowers across the bottom there. And now we are ready to glue that inside our um, card. So this is a really important step that you really need to take the time to be careful that you get this right. So when we're gluing this panel in, we wanna make sure we get it centered and straight, okay? Because what's going to happen is we are going to use this inside panel to guide where we place this front panel, okay? Because we want that front panel to perfectly cover and hide this inside panel. So if it's um, a little bit off or crooked, your front panel will be a little bit off or crooked, okay? So there we go, that looks pretty good. It's not, I think it's okay, it's, it's close enough. Okay, so that's our inside panel. Now we're gonna close this flap and we are going to work on our front panel here. So I'm gonna bring in some Just Jade ink and this gigantic leaf stamp. So this is from the stamp set. It's a very large leaf, just like that. Um, scaled pretty well, actually, for the ladybug, if you think about how tiny ladybugs are. 
Um, this leaf is actually scaled pretty well for the size of the, the ladybug. So I'm going to ink this up. Now my Just Jade is getting a little on the dry side. I didn't re-ink it because I knew I was probably not going to be using it for a while once it retires. So I just figured I wouldn't bother re-inking until maybe, hopefully, it comes back as a core color someday. So I'm going to stamp my Just Jade. I'm just trying to get some even coverage here. There we go. Um, I'm going to stamp my leaf just in this bottom left corner. Okay. Now, that is not great. This is what happens when you don't use your Stampin' Pierce mat underneath your um, photopolymer stamp. So this one has a lot of real estate, uh, meaning a lot of stamp and no give, right? So if you have anything underneath your work surface that doesn't make it allow it to be perfectly flat, you're going to get that. But you know what? We can hide it with the ladybug, so I'm not going to sweat it. All right, so we're going to bring in our Magenta Madness again, and we're going to stamp a couple more flowers. So we'll stamp a couple over on this side like that and then add a couple on this side like that okay and then we are going to stamp our hello my friend now these are two separate stamps which i love because we can do them in two different colors really easily so i'm actually going to stamp the my friend first and then add my hello afterwards so my hello or sorry my friend is going to go Kind of right about there hopefully straight and then we're gonna bring in the hello and again in the magenta and we're gonna stamp that okay I gotta move this closer so I can actually see what I'm doing I'm hoping this is straight <laughs> okay that's not bad it's really hard to see when you can't look straight down all right so that is our front panel uh, we're gonna go ahead and layer that so I should have mentioned this is actually cut to two and seven eighths square and then I have my black layer that is cut to three inches square, which is going to perfectly overlap my inside panel, okay? But I'm gonna glue this guy on first. Thank you, Doris, I love this card too. I love the colors in it, it just makes me happy. These bright, cheery colors. So we're gonna go ahead and layer our stamped panel on top of our black one. There we go. And now this is the part that we really need to be careful, okay? So we're going to layer this panel over top of our swing arm here, but we need to line it up perfectly with that inside panel, okay? So we wanna make sure that it layers perfectly over top and we don't see any of that inside panel peeking out from behind. So I'm gonna use liquid glue for this because it gives me just that little bit of extra time before it sets up to kind of get this exactly the way I want it. I want to make sure I only put glue where I know this panel is going to go, right? I don't want to go past the edges of this one when I'm applying the glue. And then we're just going to take a minute and be really careful about lining this up. And this is why that placement of that inside panel is so important. Whoopsie, don't move. There we go. Okay. And that way, when we open it, oh, surprise, there's a panel in there. Okay. All right, now let's work on our ladybug. I have punched the body of the ladybug from some black cardstock and the wings from some magenta madness. Now I'm gonna bring in the dots for the wings. That is included in the stamp set as well. And we're gonna stamp the dots in black on our magenta madness wings. So we'll just stamp those on there. And I like to let it sit for just a little longer than I normally would to make sure I get really nice solid black um, image there. Okay. Now I want my wings to kind of curl up a little bit. So I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm just going to burnish them a little bit so that they kind of bend upwards. Can you see how that works? They just kind of bend upwards a little bit. All right. So then we are going to add a couple of mini dimensionals right at the top of the wings because I want these to pop up so that it looks like our ladybug is about to take off or maybe just coming in for a landing. I don't know, could be one, either one. And then we're going to center our wings on the body, just like that, isn't that cute? Oh, she's so adorable. And then I had to add a little bling, so I'm gonna bring in my Wink of Stella, and I'm going to wink the body of my ladybug, and I just love the effect of this. It looks almost like black glimmer paper when you add Wink of Stella to black cardstock. It just looks so yummy. All right, so there, can you see the shimmer on that girl? 
so cute. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and adhere this, and I'm actually gonna move my ladybug up a little further than I did on my sample, just to hide my little oopsie there. Okay, so we're gonna add a couple of dimensionals to the back of our ladybug. So one and two. And we'll get rid of our backings. Yep, they sure do wake you up with these these colors, Cheryl. I just love them. They make me they make me happy. All right, so there's our ladybug. Now, I decided I wanted her wings to really have a little bit more pop. So I'm using some of our matte black dots. These are retiring uh, from the annual catalog. And the best part is the large dots in the pack actually fit perfectly on the large dots on the wing. Whoopsie, let's get that stuck in place. Okay, and then the small dots fit perfectly on the smaller dots. It's like stamping up plan this or something. I don't know. So we're going to go ahead and add our dots and that's just going to give some fun dimension to our ladybug's wings here. So we'll leave another big one there. And a couple more small ones. And one more big one. And there we go. So fun. I'm just going to curl those up a little bit because they did flat. Whoopsie. That guy does not want to stick. It's cold in my craft room. It's beautiful outside, but really cold in my studio. So these guys are not wanting to stick. The adhesive is uh, cold. There we go. I got to heat it up a little bit. So there's our finished card. Now on the back, I did add an extra panel because on the inside here, there's not a ton of room to write a message. I mean, there's some space. And if you're like me and you like to just write, dear so-and-so happy birthday or thinking of you, love Lena, then you're good. But if you want to write a little bit more, um, I added on my sample a four by five and a quarter inch basic white panel, did a little bit of stamping and that gives me some more space to write. Okay. But the cool thing about this card is that it stands up still like a tent fold. Okay. So it gives you um, some, a nice display item, um, but is a really fun way to display your DSP. Okay. So that is number one. Done and done. Let me just clean up my mess here a little bit. Those guys away. And we're going to bring in number two. So this one um, I absolutely love. I had so much fun uh, making this cute little punch art bunny. I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, I needed a couple more Easter cards and Easter is like this weekend. So I had to uh, do a little bit of finagling to come up with uh, a couple more Easter cards. And I thought this was a really fun, adorable one. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Hi, Penny. Yes, Cheryl, I will agree. The coordination is what sold me on Stampin' Up. When I started, um, when I joined, first discovered Stampin' Up, I had been buying my, um, my, all of my supplies from wherever, right? Dollar store, um, wherever. And nothing matched. <laughs> it drove me crazy. And then I discovered Stampin' Up and everything matched. And it was like, that was a game changer for me. And I, there was no going back after that. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to put this cute little bunny together. So this actually uses four different Stampin' Up! punches. So here's my body of my bunny. That's my ladybug, okay? Then I used one of the medium daisies from the medium daisy punch. These little guys are from the cactus builder punch. They're gonna be my sort of the, the um, sort of hips or legs of my bunny. And then this little guy is actually a foot from the penguin builder. It's gonna be the tail, okay? So the number one um, thing that kind of makes your punch art come to life is just gently sponging the edges of all of your pieces. And what that does is it just gives them a little bit of dimension. Now I should probably cut off the antenna off my ladybug here because we don't have bunnies with, with antenna. So we're just going to take our snips and just trim off those antenna. We're not going to need those bits. And I'm just taking a sponge dauber. You can do this with a Stampin' Sponge. You can even do it with a blending brush. And I'm using a little bit of Smoky Slate ink and I'm just adding just the slightest hint of shadow all the way around my bunny. Okay, so that's one piece. I'm gonna do the same thing to sort of the hip pieces here. I'm not gonna go all the way around. So that's gonna be the right one. And then, what am I doing? This one's gonna be the left one. So I'm just kind of doing the edges there. That's the only part we're gonna see. Okay, so there's our bunny, there's our hips. And then the daisy, for the daisy punch, we're actually just gonna trim off 
two petals and these are going to be the ears of our bunny. So we're just going to trim those guys off. And again, I'm going to add just a little hint of sponging around my, my petals here. And those are going to be my ears. Okay. And then my cute little cotton tail again, a little bit of ink, not a lot. We don't want him to look like a dirty bunny, right? <laughs> we want him to still be clean, but he's, we're just going to add a little bit of dimension. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna show you how, how to put this together. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of seal to the top of my bunny's head and we're gonna add our ears. Oh, you know what? I used the wrong punch. Hang on, we need the large daisy. What am I doing? Okay guys, sorry about that. We need the large daisy, which is retiring. So to make the ears on our bunny, we actually need to punch um, just a portion of the large daisy. We don't need the whole thing. So I'm just gonna pop that out. And again, we're gonna trim off the parts we don't need. We only need two petals. And we're gonna give it a little spongy spongy. Whew, that was close. We almost had a bunny with mini ears. There we go. Okay. So let's try that again. So this is the large daisy, okay? And I'll just show you the difference. The large one is this one, the small one. Look at how much smaller it is, okay? So in order to get the scale right for this little bunny, you do wanna use the large daisy. So we're gonna go ahead and add our ears to our bunny. Okay, just like that. So cute. And then to add our hips, they're just gonna kinda peek out sort of behind sort of where the bum would be of the bunny, right? This is the backside of a bunny. So I'm gonna add just a teeny bit of liquid glue to my piece here, and that's just gonna allow me to position this and get it just right before it sets up. So we're just gonna kinda angle that there. There's one hip, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. A little bit of glue. And for this, I like to kind of lay it down so I can kind of get them symmetrical. So we're just gonna add this little guy here, just like that. Okay, and then to add our little tail, I'm just gonna take and cut, um, actually I already have one cut, cut. I'm gonna use a half mini dimensional, just cause it's such a teeny tail that um, a large one will not fit. So I like to just cut them in half and then use my take your pick to place my mini dimensional on my piece. And then it also works to take off the backing, get rid of that. And then it also works to place it. So take your pick. If you don't have one of these, you need one like now. <laughs> um, it is my go-to. I don't honestly don't know how I ever stamped without it, to be honest. It was, uh, it is my, like, it, I can't do anything without it anymore. So there's my cute little bunny. Isn't he adorable? I love him. So I'm gonna add a couple of dimensionals to the back of my bunny. I'm not gonna stick them on yet, um, but it'll just help me with placement once I am ready to adhere him. We're gonna add a couple of minis to the ears, okay? And so then here I have, this is a little sneaky peek of the new annual. This is some DSP that is coming in the new annual catalog on May 3rd. Um, and it is the, it's basically like a petal pink and white gingham. So I'm going to set this onto my grid paper and I really want to make sure that it is straight because this is going to help me get my, um, letters placed. So these letters are cut using the playful alphabet dies, which are also retiring. I am so sad. These dies are going away. Um, I love these dies. I use them a lot and they are going. So again, this is another item that is one that I would really recommend picking up before they go away forever. Okay. So we are going to place our letters and our bunny on our DSP strip. I should mention this is two by five and a quarter inches. Okay. And then my little Easter, this is actually stamped and heat embossed um, in white on basic gray cardstock. The sentiment is from the Easter friends set. Um, and I'm going to position this kind of just under the P there. So I just kind of want to play around with this and make sure I get it straight. And at the right height, I'm going to leave some space here because I want to add some ribbon. 
okay? Once I kind of have them the way I want them, then the first thing I'm gonna do is glue my bunny on. So we're gonna stick him down because he's kind of the focal point. So we wanna make sure he's where we want him. So we're gonna get this guy on. Okay, right about there. Okay, and then I have, when I um, die cut my letters, I actually use some of the foam adhesive sheets and they're like a giant dimensional. Okay, so they give your letters dimension. You don't have to fuss with little bits of dimensional to pop your letters up. It just gives the whole thing some really great uh, dimension. It makes it just look a little bit more, um, gives it a little bit more oomph on your, on your project. So I'm just taking my time here to place these really carefully to make sure that I get them straight and where I want them. So we'll do our P there. And then we'll do our Y. Right about there. And last but not least, our H. So H is going to go right about there. Okay, and then our Easter is actually just going to get glued flat. Um, I did fussy cut this. It was not the easiest one to fussy cut. So if you are, you know, have an aversion to fussy cutting, I actually have really good news for you because there is a new bundle coming in the new catalog that is sentiments and dyes that make them look like they're fussy cut. It is like the most ingenious bundle ever. It's actually Lisa Curcio's million dollar set. If you're familiar with Lisa Curcio from the U.S., um, it is her million dollar achiever set and oh my goodness, it's going to be a good one. All right. Did I bring my, I didn't bring my ribbon over. What am I thinking? Where's my ribbon? Oh yes, I did bring it. It's right in front of my face. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we are going to add, this is, um, this ribbon is from the heart and home. I think it's from heart and home. Um, and it's petal pink. So it matches this perfectly. And so I'm just going to grab a glue dot. And we're going to add, actually, you know what, before we do that, let's glue this onto our, our mat. So I mentioned this was two by five and a quarter inches. So I have a basic gray mat that is two and one eighth by five and a quarter. So we're gonna have just a narrow little border there. So we're gonna go ahead and glue that on and then we'll add our ribbon. So we'll pop that on. And again, the liquid glue allows us time to just wiggle it into position so we get that well centered. And then I have my ribbon with a glue dot already there. And we're going to add just a little bit of ribbon. I forgot to bring my ribbon scissors over, so we're using some snips. And we'll add another glue dot here to secure that, okay? And before we add our bow, we're going to actually attach this to our card. So we'll set the ribbon aside for a minute. We'll tie our bow in a sec. Now, the background for our little bunny is this gorgeous stitched greenery panel. So this is a die that cuts this gorgeous stitched leaf um, vine kind of look. Um, it's a large die. It covers the entire p um, panel and one run through your machine and you get this gorgeous texture. So this is, um, this piece of uh, basic white is cut to four by five and a quarter. And then my basic gray mat is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So we're gonna go ahead and layer those. Now, just a word of caution, when you are using this die, you don't wanna use liquid glue to glue it down because the liquid glue will ooze out through the little holes and you'll have a sticky mess. So you wanna use some tape or something other than liquid glue to glue this on. So we're gonna go ahead and layer that. Just like that. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Joyce. It was, um, it, every day right now is interesting because we, uh, we have crazy staffing shortages right now. <laughs> like we had another 20 teachers out today and like, it's just, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, it's busy, busy and yeah, not just teachers. We were yesterday we had zero custodians in the school. <laughs> so it's kind of crazy, but that's okay. We will survive. June's coming, right? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and glue our um, Hoppy Easter um, onto our background. Now this is gonna go on about three quarters of an inch up from the bottom, so it's not gonna be centered. Um, I like the look of it a little bit off center. If you are someone who likes things symmetrical, you certainly could put it on centered. So we'll add a little bit of adhesive. 
And again, I'm gonna use my grid lines to help me get this straight. So three squares up from the bottom. And we'll stick her down. Okay, and then I have a petal pink card base. It is uh, five, sorry, five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. Hi, Bonnie, how are you? Hope you are good. So we'll fold our card base in half along our score line, and then we're going to, whoop, got a little bit of a bunny ear there. We are going to add a bit of adhesive, and we're going to pop this on to our card front, just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna add our little bow. So I'm gonna bring back my roll of ribbon and make my bunny ears, cross left over right, bring it around and through, and then I'm gonna adjust. This ribbon is really lovely. It's very soft um, and makes it really easy to work with. So there is our cute little bow. Again, I'm using my snips, it's hard to get a good um, angled cut with snips because it's the, the ribbon slides a little bit. And then we're going to add a glue dot to the knot of our bow. And add our little bow just at the top there. So cute. Okay, on the inside, I stamped another sentiment from the Easter Friend set and then some more of the flowers. And these adorable three little dots. These little dots are almost as good as a spatter stamp. <laughs> so they add some interesting um, texture to your collage stamping. Okay, so there is number two done and done. Clean up a little bit of the chaos here and we'll move on to number three. Number three I love. So I wanted to show you that we can do more than just ladybugs with our ladybug builder punch. Um, so I've got this adorable queen bee here on my slimline card. Again, I wanted to highlight the fact that that large daisy punch is going away. The medium one is staying, but this large one is retiring. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do this one. Lots of bits and pieces here. So we're going to try to work fairly quickly. All right. So to start my slimline card base, I'm just going to mention, um, starts out as a piece that is seven by eight and a half inches. Okay. And then I scored in the middle at three and a half so that when I fold it, I get, is it eight and a half? Did I say that right? Nope. Seven, seven by eight. Okay. So I cut off a half inch from the width of my sheet of cardstock. Okay. So I end up with a base that is three and a half by eight. Okay. All right. So then we have our um, mat. So we have two pieces that we're going to deal with to create our background. So this is a piece of basic white cardstock that I, it's actually a piece that was left over from this, right? When I cut my card base, this was left over and I have run it through and with the hive embossing folder. Now the hive embossing folder is only six inches long, right? So what do we do? Well, we're actually going to rip part of this to get rid of the part that didn't emboss. And that's just gonna add an interesting bit of an element to the top of our card, okay? So we're gonna set those guys aside. We're gonna do a little bit of stamping on our bumblebee piece. I just gotta grab my chamois because this one's got magenta ink on it. We don't wanna put magenta in our bumblebee. So bumblebee is yet another retiring ink color, beautiful golden yellow. And we're going to bring back this floral stamp. We're going to stamp some just along the top edge of our bumblebee piece. So again, you just want to have a really firm touch when you're using these photopolymer stamps, okay, um, to get the best possible transfer of color and quality of image. Because like I said, there's a lot of real estate on these stamps and they don't have any give, right? They're, they're hard, they're firm, and you want to make sure that you just give a little extra time for that ink to transfer. Okay, so there's my little collage of flowers at the top. And that way we can layer our um, basic white embossed piece on and we'll have that cute little background there. Okay, now I should mention this is cut to seven and seven eighths by three and three eighths. Okay, so that mat, this piece was before I tore it off. <laughs> Uh, seven and three quarters. No, I lied. No, I didn't. Seven and three quarters by three and one quarter. Okay. So that is going to get adhered onto here. Now, before we do that, um, I have a couple of leaves. So these leaves 
are from the stamp sets, that giant leaf again. And this is another little sneak peek of one of the upcoming in colors. I used the new Parakeet Party. This green is so fun. Bright and cheerful, a real lemon lime green. And um, so I stamped tone on tone. I used the Parakeet ink on Parakeet cardstock. Okay, and then I fussy cut out my leaves. And what I'm going to do now is glue them in this top sort of portion of my background piece, okay? So we're gonna glue those on right off the top. So a little bit of liquid glue here. I'll add one there. Hi, Jill, glad you could make it. Hi, Julie, thanks for joining me today. All right, so we're gonna add our two leaves, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and add our um, honeycomb, our hive embossed piece, okay? Don't worry about this gap here, we're gonna hide it with that daisy. So for this, I'm gonna use some seal, but I need to go slow, okay? When you are applying seal to embossed cardstock, you wanna go slowly when you apply it, otherwise you run the risk of pulling up the cardstock, okay, of tearing it. Because the cardstock is so distressed um, when you do this deep embossing like this, um, if you go too fast with the seal, you will peel up some of the layers of cardstock. Okay, so there is our background. How cute is that? All right, now that's this we're actually going to go ahead and layer onto our card base right away. So again, we're going to add a little bit of adhesive. And we're going to pop this on just about there. Okay, now I always like to burnish from the back just in case I have inky or sticky fingers, okay? All right, now let's put together our daisies. So we have two of the large daisies and one small. That's going to construct this large daisy up here. So to glue these, to put these together, I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue here. We're going to offset our petals. So these are the two large ones. This is the punch that is retiring. And then we're going to put another little dab of glue and we're gonna add our smaller one, again, offsetting the petals. Okay. Once we've got that on, then I have somewhere in my little pile of bits here, um, some yellow DSP that I have punched using the half inch circle to give us a center for our daisy. So again, we're gonna add that in the center. Okay, then we're gonna take our bone folder and we're just gonna curl the petals a little bit. So by doing that, again, we get a little bit of dimension, a little bit of interest, just like that, okay? Now this guy is gonna go right up here and hide that gap, okay? We just wanna take care that most of the petals are on our card. If we go too far off the edge, it won't fit in our envelope, okay? So I'm gonna add a few dimensionals to the back of my daisy. I usually like to do three on the large one. So we'll get rid of our backings and pop this on just like that okay and then we're going to make two smaller daisies so this is using the the medium daisy punch this one is not retiring it also punches out the daisy image in the stamp set which is awesome so we're going to layer two of the small daisies for each flower so we'll go one and two okay and then i have some more little circles these ones, I couldn't even tell you what this punch is. Um, it is a, one of the itty bitty punches that we used to carry. Um, it's just a teen, it's like three eighths of an inch rather than a half inch circle. Um, but the half inch circle would totally work on this one. Um, you don't have to use a smaller one. I just liked the scale of this. So again, we've got our daisies and once again, we're gonna do a little bit of burnishing here just to get them a bit of a curl. And then I wanna show you this fun trick to create these smaller leaves. So I wanted these leaves to look similar to these, okay? But there wasn't a small leaf image in the daisy set. So I improvised a little. So I've got a piece of Parakeet Party cardstock and my Parakeet ink. I'm gonna give this a quick scrub because I've got just jade on my leaf here. So I'm going to ink up my leaf and stamp it on this little bit of scrap parakeet here. 
So we're going to stamp it just on the scrap. Okay. Then I'm going to bring in my strawberry builder punch. Now this is another retiring punch. I'm so sad this one's going because I love the shapes in this punch, but we're going to use this leaf from the strawberry punch and punch it out of our stamped leaf image. So I'm just going to line it up. I want to center my vein right on my leaf and punch it out. Now my, there we go. Get rid of that. And there's our leaf. And it looks very similar to these ones. Okay. So we're going to add just a little bit of seal to the back of our daisies. And we're going to add one leaf. This guy I've already done. So we'll add another one here. Isn't that sweet? Love it. All right. So these guys are going to go on kind of like this, kind of trailing down our card. So we're going to add again a dimensional, actually probably two, one to the daisy and one to the leaf and stick these guys on. Hi, Martine. How are you? I hope you're good. Hi, Betty. I hope you're having fun with your Easter friends stamp sets. So sweet. You got to send me some photos of what you make. All right. So there are our daisies. Now, star of the show, our queen bee. So to make this, we need um, one black ladybug body. We need one punch from Bumblebee. And then this one is just scrap. It's not somebody, nobody took a bite out of them. <laughs> We're only going to need one of the antenna. And that's going to give us our little stinger on our Bumblebee. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is take on the bumblebee, um, on the bumblebee ladybug, we're going to take and just kind of follow the shape of the body and trim off the head. Okay. So we're chopping the bumblebee head off just like that. Okay. And then we're going to add some stripes. So to do that, I'm going to bring in just a ruler and my dark black stamp and blends, and we're going to draw some lines. It really doesn't matter where you start, um, but we're going to draw six lines and they're going to be spaced out a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now that looks really bad, right? But not to worry. We're going to take our brush tip and we're going to fill in the space between these lines. And because we're using the dark black, it's really quite opaque. You don't see any of the yellow through and you get really nice black coverage. We'll do this last one, color this little guy in. And there we go. There is our bumblebee body. Isn't that sweet? So cute. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and layer the body onto our black ladybug. Okay, it's going to get layered just like that. So we're going to add just a little bit of adhesive here. And we're going to pop that on. Just like that. Oopsie. There we go. Okay, so there's our body. And then we need to make our antenna. So all we're going to do, I'm just going to trim part of one of the, not the antenna, we're going to make our stinger. We're trimming off one of the antenna from our extra ladybug that we cut. And then I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna cut off, I'm gonna turn it this way, I'm gonna cut off the little ball on the end of the antenna and make it like a point. There we go, there's our stinger. How easy was that? Super simple. So we're gonna add just a titch of liquid glue here. Notice I left myself enough real estate there to apply glue, it makes it much easier. And then we're gonna add our little stinger to the bumblebees bomb. There we go. So cute. All right. Then I have two of the wings punched from vellum cardstock. Okay. Two, because I wanted it to have a little bit extra fullness. So I'm going to take and actually cut, um, one of the sets of wings apart. I'm just going to clean it up. So it's a nice, neat cut. And we're going to just actually layer those so that they kind of overlap like that. Now to do that, the best way to do it is with a little bit of seal. Um, the seal does not show as much through the vellum as a, a liquid glue or glue dot. Okay, so there we go. And then we're going to layer those in behind the full set of wings. 
Okay, so again, I'm gonna add just a little bit of seal. And we're gonna add our second set of wings. Just make sure they're straight. Stick that together, and then I'm gonna clean this up here and just trim off the excess bit that's kinda of hanging out. There's my wings, okay? Again, we're gonna burnish these so we get some nice dimension. Okay, and this time I'm not gonna use dimensionals. I'm gonna use a little bit of seal once again. So I'm just gonna add a little bit across the top of my wings here. And we're gonna pop that on just like that. And then because every queen bee needs to sparkle, I'm gonna add some rhinestones. Now these rows of rhinestones are from forever ago. We used to carry rhinestones that came, were sold in these sort of strips. Um, they are long gone, but I still have, I think I bought like probably 30 packs of them when they were retiring because I love them. And uh, so I still have some. Um, you could totally take the time to place these individually, but I figured since I have them, why not use them? So there she is with her diamond necklace, our little queen bee. And she is going to go on right about here. So again, a couple of dimensionals. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. So fun. I love this, this bundle. It's so much fun to play with. So there is our queen bee. And the last step is to add a sentiment. So we're going to bring back that you can bug me anytime sentiment if I could find it. There it is. And my memento ink. So this is just a half inch strip of bumblebee cardstock. So we'll go ahead and stamp that. I'm going to do it towards one end. Now, would you believe I forgot to bring my tailored tag punch over? I can only use it for a couple more weeks and I forgot. I neglected it. Oh, well, we're going to do this one by hand. I guess I have to get used to it, right? <laughs> So we're going to trim in the middle, just make a little slit, and then we go from corner and the other corner, and that gives us a nice even banner end. The punch is so much faster, but you can still do it this way. Okay, and then the last, we're going to put this onto our card right about there. I'm going to trim this a little bit shorter. It's a little on the long side. We'll add a couple of dimensionals and pop this on. right about there and hopefully straight it always helps to start with your card straight when you're trying to put something on on it straight right about there works okay and then i have a little bit of twine so this is the playful pets um baker's twine it comes it's black and white when you um purchase it but i wanted black and yellow to go with my queen bee so all i did is i took my daff my dark daffodil delight stamp of blends and um, just colored it. I colored the white yellow. So now I have black and yellow twine. And I'm going to use that to make my cute little bow. So we'll just pull that tight. Get our loops just so. We want them fairly small. And we're going to add our bow just to that little part of the end of our sentiment strip here so we'll trim these off a bit way more than we need and a quick little glue dot we're going to pop that right on the end of our banner there and then we're going to add actually you know what this one will go this way just because of the way the words are so i don't cover them up and there we go how cute is that so so fun now on the inside again i stamped some more of my um bumblebee flowers to add a little bit of interest on the inside of my slim line you like that one so cute all right so let me bring back the other projects from today oh thanks for all the hearts you guys i guess, I guess you like them <laughs> all right so there's our happy easter and our hello my friend now i have a couple more samples to show you like i said i love this bundle and i've been playing with it for months literally here's another one again uses the daisy punch um just a little bit different layout so fun fun here's another one this one i actually use some of the the tulip the flowering fields dsp for the wings of my ladybug this one just bright and colorful now on the wings of this one she has some gloss here i actually used um the fine tip glue to add to my um, spots and they give just that really fun glossy kind of look and then here's a swap card that i received that uses this set um so when you stamp and punch the stamp images you get a white border 
okay so that's just one something to be aware of you will have a little bit of a border around your image when you punch it out okay oh and here's one more this was a swap card that I made uh, for a swap that I participated in just a book fold okay lots of ideas with this punch I could go on and on but I need to stop and go check on my dinner <laughs> Okay. Thanks ladies for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic week. Enjoy the sunshine. If you are in Southern Ontario, have a very happy Easter and I will see you next week for another episode of Tuesday live at five. Bye for now.